Hello, my name is Steve Stewart. I'm the founding consultant of Vrick Consulting, and this is Wikipedia, your guide to children's services recruitment and retention. Chapter nine of Wikipedia this year deals with the DfE uh, workforce census, um, and 9.2 looks at regional aspects of that. And so there's a number of regional snapshots. That'll be 9.2 point something, point something. The reason why I haven't got that information right now is what I intended to go through and do all the data mangling, uh, and then do all the recording. But the fact is, is that there are so many different nuances on each one, and they're all pretty different so far, as of the four or so that I've done. I was thinking, I've got to just get these down, because otherwise I'll forget some of the nuances and some of the information from them. Um, and it's fascinating, it really is. So anyway, this one's on Yorkshire and Humber, okay? And um, each of these snapshots doesn't follow the same uh, kind of profile with the same information in each one, because it is whatever's relevant to you. Okay, as a region, relevant to that region. I'm presuming you're from Yorkshire, if you're watching this. But if you're not, hello, uh, welcome, nice to have you with us. Um, so, this is an extract from the data sheet uh, that I present. I wanted to share that with you. It's got all of the DFE core data in it, which is in black, and it's got a number of things that I've extrapolated from there, which are in green, okay, uh, which are the kind of things that I look for as a workforce strategist. However, I was looking at these figures here, and these are the most startling ones to start with. So you can see actually that your number of leavers is basically going on an upwards trajectory year on year, okay? More leavers in one year than the year before, mm, okay? So that's something that needs to be addressed. But if you actually look at your number of social workers you've employed in 2017, it went up to 2018, and it went up to 2019, and it went up to 2020. So even though these figures were going up, your recruitment was outstripping it. Brilliant, that's what you want. Yeah, ideally, you don't want this figure going up as well. If you can keep that going down as well, double bubble, hey, you're really there. But then all of a sudden here, the tides turned. There were less, although it was less than the increase. But here, the number of social workers has dropped significantly. So something's happened. Is that while well, that figure's going up and you had that mitigated by your recruitment activity, something happened here that made it get worse. So all of a sudden you start looking. So you can see here when we're talking about the lever increases and you can see that figure in green because that's the kind of figures that I use because I want to try and see passion. And that's, you know, it's fairly steady, really. Um, but it is going up. What's different, though, is your number of vacancies. And you see your vacancies, which were 286 and then went down to 243, are now rocketing. So effectively, 243 to 715, that's nearly treble. That's nearly trouble. And what you actually had here was is that you had a situation where you had the perfect uh, situation where you actually had, sorry, in terms of agency supply, you had an oversupply of agency staff. You had more agency staff than vacancies on those two years there. So what you will suddenly see is that that provides a pull back to permanent employ because there's a jeopardy involved with agency work within the region. It also creates a situation where you can have a very effective MOU, which slows the churn which effectively gets that impact there. But when that ceases to be, you can see that mm, it's going up there, mitigated somewhat by a massive increase in agency staff, which is not what you see everywhere. Other people have a difficulty with supply, but you do wonder whether there's a correlation. Okay. Now, the next thing that I look at is establishment. Ignore the fact there's a vague figure there, because I'm going to come on to that. And you'll see that your establishment goes up year on year, and it goes up by this amount. And that's what I've seen across the other data as well, we have a requirement, there's a demand for more social workers. And then you've got this figure. Negative 103.6. The establishment across the region, I think, well, that doesn't happen, so why is that? So all of a sudden I go and try and find out where it is. And where it is, is in Bradford. Now, I'm aware that the situation with a trust or whatever going there, but it's still giving the figures in terms of there are this many workers employed. The number of social workers, it's always got a three at the front, yeah? It might be going up about as low as 11, which is what it is now, but there, um, and the levers is always around 60, and the agency staffing is going right up, and the vacancies are going up, but then they drop. So the establishment's dropped, and the vacancies have dropped. Well, I would suggest, actually, well, what that means is that they've deleted a number of vacant posts. 
or they'd move people in person and they'd, back, they'd deleted the person that they'd moved from. So whatever workforce flexibility is being used is that there are now a hundred less posts within the region due to things within that. And that skews your data quite a lot, yeah? So all of a sudden, everything that comes after this is now has to be taken with a certain pinch of salt. I can do all of this again with Bradford not included, but I'm not getting paid for this. So um, <laughs> I'm quite happy to do it. I'd love to do it, but um, that's the situation. So we go back to the Yorkshire figures and you will see now that in terms of the overall shortfall, which is your oversupply or undersupply of agency workers, where you had that fantastic situation here, where you had more workers in the region than you actually had vacant posts. That's brilliant. Um, so what that actually meant was that there was a pull back to permanent employ, and that was probably a pull back in one of your most effective in terms of your recruitment methods. Yeah, because it'd be interesting to see the source of those workers if you've got that information. But your overall shortfall is massively increasing. And the reason why it's not so much there, while that figure seems to be going down, is you've got a skew that you've had 100 posts disappear from across the region. Yeah, okay. Now, we come on more to the target kind of settings here, which is the appointments to be made in 2023. And that is the number of people that you would need to employ to move to a situation of full staffing by the end of the next reporting period. Okay, so that's the 30th of September 2023. So this is September to September, September to October, these figures, October to September, October to September. Yeah. So, and the appointments to be made, basically that is made up of three figures. First of all, it is made up of your vacancies. It is made up of your number of levers from the previous years. And it's made up of your increase yeah, in establishment, which this year has got a negative increase. But there, so therefore is that... 1,263, or plus your establishment increase, 1,160. Okay, so there's still question marks over your establishment, but you basically see that's a very big figure. That's the equivalent of basically one in three of staff that you've already got. Okay, now is that effective? So where you've got three social workers, you'd have four, or you should have four. Um, no, I don't think it is realistic. You know, it's, it's, it's disappointing to see that that figure's nearly doubled in the course of four years, uh, five years reporting. This figure here is your minimum shared requirement. This is your number of levers, which is a rising figure, yeah, remember, plus your proportion of the overall shortfall nationally, okay? And you will see that that figure is 604.6. .6. What that will mean is that the overall shortfall figure nationally will disappear during the course of 12 months, which will allow for the effectiveness of recruitment campaigns, uh, particularly trying to convert temporary staff to permanent, to be more effective, okay? And that kind of figure is 604. Yes, I know about the DFE proposals, we'll be coming onto that later, okay? But 604.6, okay? So, what am I gonna to suggest to you? Well, what was quite clear earlier on is that your recruitment activity, yeah, or the reasons behind it, were particularly effective and overcame the shortfalls in that or the increase in the number of levers. So actually you've got to start getting back to that. So you need to focus on recruitment, particularly the agility aspect, that responsiveness to an increase in vacancies. And also therefore you need to start looking at structural changes to your departments. Is that there's a further chapter on there in terms of uh, procedural methodolog methodological and structural changes. And I would suggest that you look at structural changes on there. You've got to address that overall shortage of snow there that wasn't there before. And therefore, I would suggest that you need to look at a regional approach to increase the supply of social workers into your region. And right now, I'm making an assessment of whether a region is a net contributor or detractor to overall workforce stability. And right now, last year, is that you are a detractor in that kind of area. You have been a contributor for a number of years, particularly back in 2017, 2018, where you're probably the largest contributor. But right now, that's moved on to the negative side of that. How do you engage further with me if you want to discuss this further? Well, actually, if you just want to monitor what's going on on Wikipedia, which is your children's services guide to recruitment and retention, you can follow that at Wikipedia. You can follow me at Footsock Steve, Footsock, short for Future Social, DFE Innovation Programme that I was involved with in the West Midlands. Read my reviews. They were great. Uh, web, um, Vric.consulting, that tells you a bit about the company that I work for and what we can do. And you can email me directly, steve at Vric.consulting. 
And if you just want to show your appreciation for this without doing anything else or co contacting me, please do like, subscribe and comment and you'll get further updates and we can all contribute to a wider conversation on these kind of issues. If you aren't interested in contacting, well, thank you anyway for your viewing. Uh, thank you, take care, good luck, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.